Alright guys, have to come back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. The Sao Paulo kickoff event of the season is not too far away. The challenger side begins very shortly as well. But EA has given his thoughts on how Cloud9 are getting on right now. The fact that they really have to win for their fans up against Paper Ricks in their first single elimination game. And also what agency is planning to run with Chamber now no longer being in the meta at all. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Firstly, this from N80 or from M80 John QT confirming he's moving to the States tomorrow, moved randomly to Canada to finish my engineering degree, and ended up achieving a lifelong dream of going for NZ. Life is wit. Awesome stuff to see. Great um, great story for these guys. And many are expecting M80 to be arguably the best team there in challenges. There's M80, there's TSM, there's the guards, there's of course FaZe, Shopify, and uh, G2 as well. But um, and also there's all the other teams that qualify through the open qualifiers. One of which is the governor guys over at Squirtle Squad formerly Squirtle Squad, now known as Turtle Troop, as we saw yesterday. I thought a great story here, actually, about um, Governor and as he said, he was on this breakthrough team and he eventually got kicked from that team, which these guys ended up qualifying anyway, the breakthrough team. But um, he was playing Chamber with them, drawing 30 kills in a scrim. Chamber nerve happens. Then, you know, he wasn't quite um, the player that he was before in the other agents and therefore they said, yeah, you know what? We want the best chance to qualify. We're going to play with someone else. And he says he laid in bed for hours, cried all day for the next two days, so heartbroken about this, but thought, you know what? Let's try and form another team. They made it work, right? He talked to a few people. They've sorted the team out. Squirtle Squad became a thing in the end and they qualified in great fashion. So it really just awesome to see. There is some questions around as to whether Adder, for example, given the fact that there were rumours that he's in conversations with another team and also what potential team that could be because we do believe that there are some other teams there in Tier 2 considering changes and maybe Adder had some offers on the table while Turtle Troop, as they now are, are trying to figure out an organisation that might actually sign them at some point. So, yeah, some nice silence here from Adder, but looking forward to that starting in just a couple of days at this point that begins. The other side of the story though is the actual pro side that begins in Sao Paulo, Brazil on I think it's the 14th of February. Now Ye says in this clip here they're flying out very soon either he got the dates wrong or they're flying out a few days early and it might make sense right get there a few days early get some practice in with some other teams that are local because this is a massive event. All 32 teams, well 30 teams from the Franchise League plus two Chinese teams are there in attendance. This is one of the biggest events we're ever going to have in probably the history history of Valorant franchising with all the attendees there. Not the biggest tournament ever, you know, there's $500,000 on the line, it's not quite champions compared to the meaning of the tournament, especially given the way the format is, it's, you know, not the best format, a lot of big favourites are going to go out very early on because I don't think the format is particularly good, but it's still going to be great to watch and obviously teams want to win, they want to start off very well and we want to see as well how competitive the different regions are. Are Europe just going to be on top? Is it going to be liquid? Is it going to be fanatic? How good are DRX going to be? How good are some of the other APAC teams going to be? What's the Americas region looking like? Are Loud still going to be as competitive having lost Sassy and Pancada? Is it just going to be North American dominant within the Americas? Is that going to travel down to the challenger side as well when it comes to Ascension? These are all interesting questions that are up in the air at the moment. Now, Ye actually gives some thoughts on this last night and kind of explains what he's doing right now on Cloud9, given the fact that with the chamber being nerfed entirely and the chamber nerf coming through, there is no chamber in the meta right now. We saw in the challenger side, there was, um, I mean, what was it? Was it Phoenix, I think? And Chamber, maybe even Phoenix had more pick rate than Chamber. Like Chamber basically was 0% pick rate for a large part of it. They completely killed him. Don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. He was dominating the meta for a long period of time to arguably a pretty outrageous extent. But yeah, it was dominant on the Chamber when he was meta. Now, yeah, of course, he's not going to be running the Chamber anymore. He says that Jet is basically what he's doing nowadays. Can he be as impactful on that agent with Chamber not being as good? That's still a question that remains, but it's not like he forgot how to shoot straight. Passion, please, please let PRX win. Have a dive. Nah, that wouldn't be fun. It wouldn't be a win. It wouldn't be a win if you let someone to win, would it be? Uh, course I. Damn, I appreciate that. Uh, wait, love you, EA. Keep up the great work. I'm excited about your match against PRX. Oh, thank you. Well, hopefully I don't disappoint you guys. I know I have. Um, I guess a lot of my fans would probably be from North America, but probably a pretty good game. So hopefully I make you guys proud. This year one as well. Thank you guys so much. Um. But what was I going to say? Uh, one of the reasons I'm training more is, is because we have desire. Brazil coming up and about like less than a week. Like less than a week we're going to Brazil, I think, because it's on February 4th slash 5th slash 6th, somewhere around there. One of those three days. But um, yeah, so we're doing that. So I'm going to try to get streaming as much stream as I can before Brazil and because, uh, yeah, I missed you guys. Who's your new main? Is hanging in Valorant? Probably Jeff for the most part. 
I think I'm just trying to play off. Wait, one okay. beneath me. Another fucking hell, I'm gonna flush it. Oh, oh, dead. Uh, Holding long. We have a woman flush. I'm gonna stun default, she, okay? Shut up, guys. That was like. Let's get like. I got you. Maybe heaven. There's one outside. Nice. You just have a one bot there. You will not kill my ally. I'm gonna hold that side, bro. I'll hold that side. You should run. Nice. Spike down A. One more class. Well done. So it will be interesting to see how players like Ye and like Ardis and even like Cryo, for example, who well dominated on the chamber towards the end of last year, find themselves in a spot where now they can, you know, they're having to run a different agent on the jet, for example. Obviously, a lot of these guys have run jet before very successfully, but um, you know, whether they can be quite the impact player they were previously, because the way it is now with Cloud9, with Ye joining that roster, is he gonna be set up the same way as he was, for example, when he was on optic with the guys that are now over there at NRG? Probably not to be honest we even saw that um, I think at the Ludwig Tarek Invitational that individually Ye wasn't quite on the same level that he was before not a massive surprise but just um, you know something to consider because Ye was obviously kind of the hard carry for the Loptic team and for good reason but now it's going to be a different story so this is the alpha group here for the lock-in tournament if you guys are unfamiliar if you guys that uh, didn't see the story and the drama about this this is basically a single elimination tournament they organize it like a circle but um, from each of these two teams that have been randomly seeded from the different regions next to each other, only one team advances. There's some massive games first round. Some teams are arguably blessed with who they play round one. For example, okay, Koi are a decent team, but NRG get to play Koi, whereas Cloud9 get to play Paper X, right? Which is, um, I mean, yeah, they were one of the best teams for the last couple of years here in Valorant. And Cloud9's first round matches against Paper X, if they win that one, they probably play DRX, arguably another favorite for the tournament. So Cloud9's chances of getting through to even the, you know, the quarterfinals, semifinals, to the last eight even, is rather slim. They could feasibly lose in the very first round, play a best of three against Paper X, lose that, and they're out of the tournament done and dusted. So, yeah, he's trying to say there, look, we don't want to lose. We want to ensure that we can try and win for the fans here. And also, it must be like, um, it's going to be a bit of a confidence killer at least. If you go to a big tournament in Sao Paulo, Brazil, you go there for one series and lose. That will be the case for half the teams you guys see on screen here. And it'll also be the case for half of these teams you guys see right here. So, yeah, yeah, definitely some teams have an easier run than others here. Actually, of course, the other big game that we looked at a couple of, what, maybe a week or so ago now was Sentinels versus Fnatic round one as well. So yeah, some massive games that they've organized here that either the script writers have put together or they've decided to randomly seed it and come up with this solution. But um, yeah, it's not a deal for some of these North American teams to show how good they actually can be. We'll have a good idea when they actually play the proper split, but you know, this is a good chance to get to see that potential. So which team do you guys think is going to be the best? in North America, right? So Cloud9 and Ye are saying, okay, I'm going to be on the jet now. It's probably going to be working out okay for me. Obviously still shoots very straight, makes great decisions, but might not be with the team that have quite so impactful. I thought it was interesting that uh, Cloud9's coach a while ago, I think it was MCE, basically said that, yeah, you know what? We're not so confident we have the roles locked down yet. Our team is a little bit weird in terms of which players are in which positions and stuff. So we'll see if they can get that figured out, of course, but there are still some questions to me about Cloud9, the way their team is kind of orchestrated in the role dynamics and stuff. And obviously with Chima now kind of being dead will he be so effective yay on the jet as he was on the chamber it's unlikely just because you know jet isn't the agent the chamber was recently arguably we have quite a balanced patch at the moment really with outside of chamber in terms of what agents are strong killjoy very good of course as well and maybe some changes will happen in the near future but right now it's kind of difficult to say which agent needs to be nerfed obviously nrg another team from the americas potentially should be favored but i think in a lot of people's power rankings about these teams they don't have cloud nine as high as they might have paper x and certainly don't have Cloud9 as high as they could have done within the North American region. For example, of course, Sentinels are another big question for this tourney as well. They also have a very challenging round one matchup as well. But I think this uh, power rankings list here from George Geddes from a while ago now, but still relevant, I think, is not too dissimilar to what most people believe might be occurring here. A lot of people have the idea that 100 Thieves are going to be arguably the best team in North America, if not straight up the best team. They won the Red Bull home grounds, of course, in Manchester in the early part of December, taking out Cloud9 there. So it kind of shows that maybe ST. 8 
here is probably about justified. And then there's the question, how could NRG are going to be without Marv, of course, without Ye as well for that former Optic team. And then Sentinels, they didn't look so good at the Ludwig Tarek Invitational, but there's still time for them to progress. So I think, honestly, what George has here is, you know, a lot of people will wonder how good the South American teams will be also, which I think is another big question of this entire tournament, given the fact that it is in Brazil and we'll get some Brazilian teams playing. But also we saw from Plat Chat the other day, these were their predictions for the Grand Finals. Some Fnatic, some Allowed here, plenty of DRXs, some Navis. But of all the North American teams in attendance, 100 Thieves were the only one that they realistically thought had a good chance of making the finals, which, um, I mean, look, we know how these Plat Chat predictions can and tend to go. They might not be so accurate, but seemingly not that much faith right now in Cloud9 and Ye to actually even win their first round game. And the possibility of Cloud9 being eliminated immediately at top 32 would not be a great start to their season. But very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.